Matt Terry, yo. It's going to be a few minutes before this thing kicks in, okay? All right. It's an honor to have you. First of all, I didn't even tell you. Thank you for your time, my friend. You bet, partner. Happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. I know you're rocking and rolling, as we all are. So a few more seconds and we'll get it. Round up family. Greetings, round up family. Hey, hey, round up family. It is your boy, Hasco. Two more minutes to get everybody logged in. Roundup family, good afternoon. This thing loves to move slow. And Matt, at any time, you might hear my dogs just blow up, just... We'll keep pushing. Can you hear me, Matt? You didn't say anything. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I had on. it on mute. I was All right. checking something out real quick. You're good. Now, Matt, if you want, if you've got two screens, you can pull it on your other screen. You can see all the questions coming in. It'll be, it'll be rolling in like that. Oh, I see what you're saying. I Matt know. Terrio, yes. Finding deals. Welcome, Roundup family. Welcome, Chris Haskin. This is your boy, Hasco, back again with my Monday Masters. Have an opportunity. I'm honored to hang out with Matt Terrio today. What's going on, Matt? Chris, living the dream, baby. How's the weather? Where you at? I'm in sunny California. Uh, rained yesterday, but the sun's back out today. Feeling good. I think it's a nice 68 degrees, nice and dry. Not a cloud in the sky. Nice. It is gorgeous here. It's about 88. It's going to be 95 here today. Summer's here. Yeah. Matt, you know my mission, my ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. <clears throat> Our paths crossed recently, and I was like, I got to get this guy on my Monday Masters. Matt, for my audience, tell me a little bit about your background sure. and how we get to real estate, Matt. Sure. Yeah. When I got out of the Marine Corps, I spent the next 15 years or so of my life in the music business at a small little hip hop label with a major label distribution and did really well for myself, made my million by the time I was 30. And then this little thing called the digital download came along and just turned that whole industry upside down. Yeah. And, you know, in, in hindsight, it's crystal clear what was happening. But uh, when it was happening, I hadn't a clue. I think in six months, really quickly went uh, bankrupt, got divorced and was bagging groceries, believe it or not. I was at the age of 34 and basically had to start life all over from scratch. So I had the, I don't know, what I think was a pretty pretty pathetic pity party back then. I can't imagine myself going through that again, but I remember how I was just so mad at the world. I was blaming everybody, everything, like this wasn't fair. And, you know, I was really cranky and angry. And I was at that grocery store for about six months and I started to recognize that, wow, there's not, there's no shortage of shoulders to cry on, but uh, there ain't nobody coming to my rescue either. And so I, uh, the, the grocery store manager of all people, he was also 34 years old. So we were the same age. He'd been pushing carts there since he was 16 years old. So he was only two years away from retirement. And so we kind of, we connected, we were, we we're at the same age. And uh, he said, Matt, if you want your money back, I want you to consider real estate. And he said these words to me, he said, real estate is the final frontier where the average person has a legitimate shot at creating real wealth. And I've said that quote, repeated that quote probably a thousand times since, maybe even more. Because at that point in my life, I was feeling far below average. So I was like, well, gosh, I got I got some work to do just to get to average so I can make this happen for myself. And uh yeah, so I, he turned me on to this little book. You've probably never heard of it. It's called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And introduced me to this concept called passive income. And uh, it just changed my whole definition of what financial freedom is. Because uh, I'd made good money inside of the music business. And, and you know, Chris, I mean, you make a bunch of money and you spend a lot of money, right? Now you got to go, you got to go sell some more records or produce another track just to get some more money and keep replenishing. That's a vicious cycle. And, Terrible. you know, and this concept of passive income was like, all right, so let's get there.
because that sounds a lot better of you know someone something out of your control pulling the carpet out from underneath you and you fall on your butt and you like being left helpless um, that can happen now and I've got residual income through real estate that at least I know my basic needs and my family are going to be taken care of right wow. and so I might not be as rich as far as what people from the outside looking in my bank account might not be as big as it was but I am freer than I've ever been and I answer to nobody and I think I like that feeling better than just having a high status bank account yeah I think we all have this sort of distorted image in our minds mad of what rich or wealthy is and I think it's a lot smaller than what we think it could be mm-hmm mm -hmm. yeah you don't need as much as you think to uh to be free in this country, right? You just don't. I mean, the, the, the median income in this country is what? 47, $48,000 median household income. And you know, that's just two or three years of hustle of, of buying some rentals and you're there, right? And that's something that people spend a lifetime trying to go through this antiquated form of work, 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 save, 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 stash in a 401k, live below your means, make all these sacrifices and do that for 40, 50 years. <laughs> and still 95% of them, by the time they re reach retirement age, they still ain't making it. Wow. But you just shift your focus from stop focusing on creating the piles of cash and focus more on creating the streams of cash. You can accomplish in two or three, four years what people fail to do in 40. Wow, man. You're really talking to my spirit with that one, brother, because I, I think we both I remember when we talked before, we both have had the big chunks from the music industry. Mm -hmm. And from I mean, I, I got do you remember when the hit factory closed, dude? I don't. It was back. That was, that was the East Coast thing, right? Yeah. 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 I was, I was West Coast. Wave guy. <laughs> well, the hit factory closed and it was like a big scare because everything was going from analog to digital. Mm hmm. I'm like, man, if the hip right, and then out here, you know, Timbaland was with uh, Brawl Ocean, oh, Master Sound. Mm -hmm. And then with that closed, I'm like, you know what? I need to really pull my ear to what's going on. Yep. Yep. Shoot, I remember when uh, Blockbuster closed and Tower Records closed and Warehouse Music closed and Virgin Records, when that closed, it was like, wow, all these flagship music stores that used to walk into stores and buy music. And that's uh, that's where we distributed all of our, our I was going to say content. We didn't call it content back then, but uh, that's where we distributed everything. And uh, yeah, when your, dis when your distribution channel is gone, um, you could have the, the best drugs in the world, but you're just going to be sitting in the house with your own drugs. And that's kind of how it ended up. Nice. So you were taking this. Wow. I feel like we got a similar. Well, we already knew that similar stories, man. Mm -hmm. So you got into real estate, obviously. Well, for me, I started with wholesaling. Matt, what caught your attention with the first exit strategy that you liked? Well, the first one, I, I made a large investment in, in an educational program. And fortunately, I found a really good one right away. And they, they had this concept called move at the speed of instruction, meaning you didn't need to learn everything before you actually got started and took action. So say you just learn a little, then go do that. And then once you, you travel as far as you can see, once you get there, you'll see further. And one of the strategies that they would promote was, and it's still, I mean, it's a time honored strategy it's to, as much promoted today as it was then and probably a hundred years before is driving for dollars. So just driving through neighborhoods, looking for distressed property. And I came across one and it was a, a property that looked like somebody got started fixing it up and they ran out of money mid project and it just it had been sitting there for a while now just kind of rotting and so uh i came back to the to my mentor i said hey i found one he said well i said and i said now what and he goes well go write an offer and i was like well i don't have any money yet <laughs> right and he goes don't worry about it just write the offer get it under contract and i was like okay so i went and wrote the offer got under contract i said, got under contract now smarty now what do i do <laughs> and are you gonna give it to me he goes no now you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna take your deal and you're going to go to a re-meeting and this you're going to sit in the haves and wants section you say this is what i got and this is what's in it for my partner so i got really focused on, on that strategy said hey i've got this fix and flip thing uh these people ran out of money so this is your chance to seize the opportunity your loss is going to be their gain i've got under contract i don't need much but if you can bring the money in the construction crew you can have it and there's about a 30 percent markup in it for you once it's all done and complete and boy, I just had a rush to the back of the room when uh, when I after the meeting, 
and I had my choice of who I wanted to choose. And that was the first deal. And I carved out $26,000 for myself. Nice. And I was like, wow, this is, this is cool. So we're yeah. in California. So a $26,000 wholesale fee is kind of normal if you find a good deal. Okay. But, um, but that's what I did. And it kind of gave me the distinction between being a bird dog and saying, look, there's a good one over there. And then being somebody that's the bird dog that takes it to that next step and puts it under contract and say, here, now you come and get it and you buy it from me. Gotcha. But that was my first deal. And I got that pretty quickly. That was inside of probably, I'd say inside of 45, 60 days of me really trying. And so then you, both uh, that off. you didn't partner up and do the deal with them. Sort of. I mean, we ne I never actually wholesaled the contract. Okay. But they came in and did everything, and I just kind of sat there and watched. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Amen. I didn't even know what wholesaling was back then. Like, I didn't know that I could just take my money and ran. What year was that, Matt? That was 2001, 2002. Man, you've been around. Mm-hmm. And so I did that, and then what was next? It probably took about six, seven months, maybe probably eight months, more like it, before I got my second deal. But this is where it really clicked is one day out of sheer desperation. I was like, all right, I got to make this happen. And it just hit me. I just woke up. I was like, wow, there's a classified ads here. There's a giant section of people that have properties for sale. Then there's a giant section over here of people that want properties. So I just started <coughs> making phone calls and, and playing matchmaker, so to speak. And I would get a, I get a, a referral fee basically from both sides of the transaction. Nice. And was wholesaling and didn't realize I was, but I was getting fees from the buyer side and the seller side. Wow. And so I came across this one guy and I really got comfortable with this strategy of going to the RIA meetings and just promoting other people's properties. And uh, this one guy came and said, hey, I've got, I'm, got these 35 rentals in Danville, Illinois. I see you up here every week. You're getting your hustle on. Um, can you help me sell these? And I was like, yep. And wow. so that's nice. how it started. So I was able to arrange seller financing for half. So I wholesaled the other half and took that down the profit from there and used it as the down payment on there on the next half. And, you know, almost overnight with that one deal, it wasn't overnight. It was like a year and a half in the making, but I got the, uh, you know, 17 proper cash flowing properties under contract with seller financing. And then I was like, ah, this is the, uh, this is that passive income. This is what that exit the rat race thing that that one purple book was talking about. Wow. That's such a cool story. Now you understand you're living the life, passive cash flow, which is really, you know, for my audience, it, it's it's a myth. Matt, no doubt, still does something. I mean, I, I don't know exactly your whole moving parts, but mm -hmm. you still got to kind of be mindful of it. Yep. That was the beginning. And there was, I think the two big lessons that I got out of that was, one, you don't need the money to pull this off. What you need is the deal. The deal is the money, Right. The, the money is the, uh, what do they call that? Mo the money is the commodity. There's more money out there looking for deals than there are deals looking for money. So mm -hmm. if you focus on the deal, then you get to choose. Like, hey, I got a deal that's going to pay, you know, a 20% cash on cash return. Uh, Chris, would you like a piece of that? Of course you would. Oh. And then you go over to, hey, Joe, would, would you take 18%? Okay, Joe would take 18%. Hey, Kathy, will you take 15%? Okay, Kathy will take... When you got the deal, now you can shop for the money. They got to compete for you. That's and right. that was a big distinction I got out of this. And then the, the second yeah, thing... Say again? It's a shift. Yeah, totally. Totally. I was like, wow, the guy who has the control of the deal is who really has the power, not the person with the money. Mm -hmm. And that's a big paradigm shift for a lot of people. And then uh, the second part was, I don't need a bank to do this either, because after you know going bankrupt, getting divorced, and and losing everything, I mean, I did not have a credit score to speak of, so the banks were not even. In fact, I just bought my first property. Here we are, what, fifteen years later? I just got my first property two months ago with a bank loan. Like I just finally recovered. Like right now. Yeah, just two months ago, I bought a turnkey property. Yeah. Wow. Man. Wow. <laughs> but I, it took me that long to recover. So I haven't purchased any properties with bank money. And I just go to the, uh, I go to the seller. I promote uh, terms. Like they say they want, uh, I say, I can give you 70 grand cash. They say, well, I want 90. And I say, well, how long would you be willing to wait for that extra 20? And so then I can get terms on, on that balance. And uh, I, like I can that. make a deal for both of us that way. I like that. Mm-hmm. Let's get into our topic for today, Matt. Uh, we were talking about finding. We were getting to talk, talk about finding deals, <clears throat> talking about interfacing with realtors, and we we're talking about how wholesaling robs of uh, robs us of our.
our financial freedom. Got it. Cool. Let's do this, Matt. Start one. We already hit one here, driving for dollars. Everyone can do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the, the, kind of what I mentioned, if, well, I, you know, when you're generating leads, there's two ways to go about it. You can pay for those leads, you can buy the leads, or you can earn them, right? So obviously you buy them with your pocketbook, with your wallet, because you can pay for lead generation strategies like direct mail and, and pay-per-click and all the di different digital marketing strategies. That takes yeah. money. Or you can earn them, which is going to take your time and your hustle. And that's what uh, something like a driving for dollars is a time and hustle strategy. Uh, going through the classifieds is a time and hustle strategy. <coughs> Cold calling and door knocking is a time and hustle strategy. Um, I don't really like talking to people that much. I don't like initiating the conversation, I should say. I don't like chasing people. So I learned how to fish for free, essentially. And uh, I did it by... I'd always wear a shirt and I said, I buy cash, I buy houses cash, ask me how. So I'd always have it on my clothing. Uh, I had used car magnets. You know, I think there's like 20 bucks each and just put them on your car during, uh, what you call it, during working hours and, and that phone rang that way. I did, I always carried a book around with me. Like if I went to like Starbucks or something like that, it was always a for sale by owner book. And I'd always make sure it was sitting at the edge of the table facing up and people would the right person would come by it didn't happen daily but it always it always happened hey you selling a house by yourself and oh actually i'm not selling my house but i actually buy house by myself do you have one for sale like and it just turned into a conversation i put a little sticker on the back of my cell phone so my cell phone would always be face down and it says i buy houses cash on the back of my cell phone and now i have a where's my phone it's in the other room but now i have a pop socket you know the pop socket things what's that you know, little little thing that pops out the back of your phone. You can kind of hold on to it. And oh, yeah. A little round, like accordion type thing. Yeah. Now, that says I buy I buy uh, houses cash on it. So I use that yeah. instead now. Um, so those are those are really good ways to do this with, uh, with like a minimal budget, if any. But really what you're looking for. And then the other part, the, the biggest one. This is like, and I already talked about it. But going through, talk, and networking with other um other investors, other wholesalers who have properties for sale. You can go through any classified ad, whether it's online or off any website, and you can find houses for sale. I would call them up and I'd say, hey, I saw this house for sale. Can you, can you tell me a little bit more about it? And once they'd tell me about it, I would build a little bit of rapport. Then it'd be like, well, I don't know if this is going to be a good fit for me. But if I were able to find someone else that it would be a good fit for, Chris, would there be room for a small referral fee in it from me? They said, well, yeah, of course. If you find a buyer, great. Would you mind if I made a, a flyer of it with my own contact information? No, no problem. I said, great. Then I would take that flyer, and that's when I'd go to networking events. And it started with just the RIA events. Okay? But you, it works at Chamber of Commerce. It works at the Elks Lodge. It, it works anywhere where there's a group of people because at every single one of those events, someone is going to ask you, I mean, they'll ask you, can you stand up and introduce yourself and tell us what you do? It's like, hey, my name is Matt Terrio. I live here in Los Angeles. I help busy professionals build a cash flowing portfolio with real estate so they don't have to work so hard. And actually right in here today, I've got a property that fits that bill. It's a three bed, two bath on the corner, such and such. It cash flows at 15%. There's already a tenant management in place, and I've got the uh, seller financing already arranged. If you want some more information on this property or others just like it, after the meeting, meet me in the back of the room. I'll be happy to give you a flyer. Boom. Less than 60 seconds. There was my introduction. So I told you who I was, who I help, and then this is what I got, and then if you want it, this is how you get it. And that was just like my normal thing, and every day I could find some sort of networking event, whether it's an entrepreneur breakfast or a networking lunch or, you know, one of the nighttime meetings and, you know, with meetup.com, I mean, you can fill up your calendar doing that. And so I made a lot of money uh, referring those, those properties. And that was my intent initially. I just, I had to eat. I got to pay bills, right? I had to keep a roof over my head and I did that. But what happened that was even bigger that I did not foresee coming <coughs> was I really created a reputation for myself in my market. Wow, Matt's always got the deal. He's always hustling. He's everywhere. He's always got something. And then that's when that one person from Chicago had come to me and said, I've got these 35 properties. Can you help me? I see you're out here doing it. 
here, you can have them. Just get rid of them and then pay me what, what, what you get for them. Hard work makes you more lucky. Totally, totally. That type of activity, it, 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 show, it demonstrates competence. It demonstrates, like you become likable. People want to be around you because they see that you're doing it. Most people in those RIA clubs have never done a deal in their life and they just oh. look up to the person that's just done one, right? And, uh, you know, that, that attracts money. It attracts opportunity. It attracts buyers. It attracts sellers. It attracts partners. So uh, what's that? Um, a rolling stone gathers no moss, something like that. Yeah. But, uh, you just stay active in, in, in the game and all types of good fortune comes to you indirectly and stuff that you just you can't foresee. But uh, you do it. And boy, that that law of attraction thing, when you're active, you attract all kinds of great fortune. That is something. And I'm thinking about the classified ads. Is it going to be easier to do that today, Matt, being that we are? Uh, I mean, back in the day, the classifieds were a lot different. 100 percent. It's, it's just as easy today. And that can be online or off. Right. That can be Craigslist. You can do the same thing in Craigslist. Yeah. You can go to Google and, and say, uh, just type in websites like Craigslist. You can get a list of 50 of websites out there. And every single one of them has real estate for sale section in there. So that's just another investor or a private seller trying to sell their house. Hmm. I've thought about that one. Mm -hmm. Dropping nuggets. OK, so this is going to be more free stuff. <clears throat> yep. Requires. I always tell people, listen, this business either requires money or your time, money or your time. You know, I, yep. the same thing for you, you're saying your effort. <clears throat> yep. Yep. So we're going to we're going to shift gears. Let's do it. Yeah, because I know um, obviously, Matt, we come, this business just like I see it almost like the music business, dog, mm -hmm. analog. You, are you remember all the equipment? I mean, I had a hundred thousand dollar studio. Now it's just sitting. You know, I can't sell a piece for eighty bucks, man. <laughs> you can get that whole setup. It probably comes installed free in the computers these days. Man, I mean, my studio was laid, dude. You mm -hmm. know, and I'm like, uh, I, business in general is going from. I guess we call it. Well, I like to call it analog to digital with these phones, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything's online now. Are you using this stuff? Mm-hmm. 100%. I saw somebody already talking about deal machine. Everybody's talking about this deal machine craziness. <laughs> Boy, that's that's actually uh, taking that driving for dollars thing to uh, to the next level, that's for sure. So where are we starting? Oh, we want to go out and pay, spend some money to get advertising, Matt. And well, then this will segue us into the real tours. Sure, sure. So I think um, I think direct mail is still going to be your pound for pound, your your best bet. I don't know if pound for pound is right, but direct direct mail is going to get you deals the fastest, but it does take some money. And with direct mail, and you're going to hear variations. People go, oh, that doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work like it used to, or my response rate has gone way down. So I think they they ignore the five commandments of direct mail. First, you got to get delivered. <clears throat> so you got to get delivered to the right place, right? Next, you have to get notice once you land in the mailbox. Postcard. Yeah, if, if there's 100 postcards in, the, in that same mailbox, you're not getting noticed, right? So you got to get noticed. Wow. Then you got to get opened, right? So if it's a letter, you got to get opened. And you got to get read. They have to actually read it, right? Because you'll see the stuff that people will put on their mailing pieces. How many we got? Four? Yeah. Yeah, you got to get read. And then you got to get action. You have to put something in there to compel them to reach out to you. So direct mail will always work if you can fulfill those five things. Okay. And if someone says that uh, they're not getting a response from their direct mail, it's because they're violating one of those or maybe more than one. Are you seeing numbers change as we get more mobile? Everybody on the phone change on your direct mail, Matt? Um, no, because what we've what we've done is we're combining our our direct mail with our digital strategy. Nice. So, for example, uh, getting delivered, right? People like the, you know, people kind of wearing out. Like they'll do the probate list or they'll do the absentee owner list. Um, you know, and that's the same list everybody is sending to. But when you start taking all those different factors and you start stacking them on top of each other, so now I'm going to send to 
absentee owners that just went through a divorce and have a tax lien. So they got three layers of, of motivation there, three factors, motivation factors. So that's getting delivered to the right person. It's taking a little bit more time up front to make sure that you are actually focused on making uh, that your mail is landing in the right place. Then getting noticed. Okay. So this is something that we've done and I haven't shared this with too many people. So world premiere, world premiere. Drop, um, drop so ringless voicemail has been all the rage, right? Everyone's saying, Oh, you got to get the RVM and buy a list and, and blast it out there. And, the public just gets so smart so fast now because marketers will go out and just wear the hell out of something. And they get it. And, right. So this is what we do now. When we send our direct mail, we might, so we're going to be get, get delivered. So we picked out a good list. We went and skip traced that list. So we have the phone numbers of all that list. And then we might send them say something unique in the mail. So maybe it's a, it's a, a yellow letter that's in a blue envelope. Okay. So we want to make sure that we get noticed. But to increase that getting noticed and getting opened is we will say, we will send out a ringless voicemail three days after we send the mail. It would be like, hey, uh, we haven't met, but I sent you a letter. It's, I'm sure it's in your mailbox by now. It's a blue envelope and just my, my number, my name and numbers on the inside. If, if you like what you see, give me a call. So big giant mystery, right? Oh, there's a blue envelope. Who was this person? He didn't even say what it was about, right? So they, now I got to go open it to see. I said, if you like what you see, give me a call. So that's that's been a big deal as far as getting noticed and getting opened and getting read. Curiosity. Yep. Curiosity. yep. I love curiosity, man. Yeah. 100%. I think yep. that's the biggest emotion we have, man. Right? Uh-huh. So that's worked really well. So then the other part on the get action, we've, so we've been done a lot of experimenting. So the number one rule of... Not number one rule, but a big rule that you don't want to violate when it comes to direct response marketing is you don't want to give somebody more than one call to action. You just want to stay focused on one thing. There's a big study. The, the big breakthrough was in airline magazines years ago. They were there was a watch store that uh, would advertise a page full of watches, and they'd have like. 30 watches to choose from in the airline magazine. So you're sitting in there, you've got a captive audience, you're looking at the magazine and you've got, oh, look at all these pretty watches. So they, they had this new consultant come in. He says, we don't want 30 watches on the magazine. We're going to put one watch. Wow. And it, I forget the numbers, but it increased their sales rate by 300% or something with that one issue. Yeah. So that, that's been kind of a tenant in direct response marketing ever since. And same thing with direct mail for real estate is you want to send them to a phone number so you can capture their information, right? But what's so cool now is, first of all, not everybody, when they get something in the mail, do they want to call somebody? They might uh -huh. have a different way. They might go to Google and search you out first, or yeah. you make it really easy and just, you know, you're at the gym, text for more information, text such and text this, you know, sell fast to 555-5555. So, so what we've been doing is we've been giving there's here's three ways that you can get an offer, a quick and easy offer from us. Call this number, listen to a free recorded message, or text this word to this number, or go to our website and get an instant offer. In in the past, you wouldn't want to send somebody to a website because they would go there, they'd read all about it, said, Oh, nope, not for me. I don't like this guy. For whatever reason, right? They didn't like the color of the page, or they didn't like the way you looked, or they didn't like your attitude, or they didn't like the font that you use, whatever it could be. But now when you combine your direct mail with digital like that, now we can pixel that page. And now in the same way that Amazon follows you all around the internet, you can now follow your buyers, or excuse me, your sellers all around the internet with your message because they went. So the first step is, or the first thing is we're appealing to their preferred form of communication. How they want to call, talk to you. Do I want to call, do I want to text, or I want to go to a website? I don't care which one they choose because I'm going to be able to capture their information and I'll be able to follow up with them. And then we all know that the uh, the fortune is in the follow up, right? That's sharp, man. Wow. That's sharp, brother. You follow them all around and no doubt you're going to keep driving them to the website. Yep. Yep. And then, you know, if they text us, then now we capture their phone number that way. We can continue to follow up with them. And then if uh, they call us, we capture their phone number that way. We can continue to follow up with them. Nice. Nice. And the that's follow up, that's really where all the sales are made. Yeah, very rarely. Well, let me ask you, Matt, how many times do you go out and seal the deal on the first appointment? Not often, right? 
it's it's i mean you can get you can get it on that same day right but it, it's not going to be like you just show up and they sign the contract and you walk right out no right? It, it doesn't but um you know especially today a lot of people like well i'm meeting with someone else right after you <laughs> and i just met with two people before you so i just want to hear what everyone says before i make a decision right yeah. but um yeah so and uh yeah, yeah so there's that so that's that's how we've combined the direct mail with the digital nice. and then uh the other cool thing that we're doing right now is there's a, a thing that like we all know that the person that's eventually and this is kind of how we how we get them and how we beat our competition is the person that's going to eventually do business with you is the person that actually believes that you can help them and the best way to show somebody that you can help them is by helping them is, is to actually the best way to show them that you're helping them is to actually help them before they even become a client so approaching that that strategy or that approach has been really really good for us because we go out and we talk to a seller we're really aligning ourselves with the seller on their side like we're the good cop we're the problem solver we're here to protect you and help you and get you out of this bind that you're in the market now if we that's what might get in the way the market is the bad cop the market now you know because a house is only worth what the market is willing to pay for it and it doesn't really matter what you want for the property or what i want for the property it's only what the market is going to give us so I'm down with you, Chris. Let's go. Let's let's team up and let's go and take down this market and let's beat up this bad guy together. <laughs> right. So that's the positioning of our conversation. And that really separates us from the, our competition as far as, you know, most people go in. It's the buyer versus the seller. They go back and forth on price and there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. And that's kind of how most people go about this business. And if you go through and, you know, it's a little bit cliche to go for a win-win strategy, but if you truly are interested in getting a win-win, you're going to get more deals closed, at least more contracts signed for sure. Wow, man. You know, when I was watching your videos over the weekend, I'm like, uh, the words and just the strategies that you use, I can tell you're a master. <laughs> you know, it just comes with repetition, you know? That's my point. I mean, like this stuff here, you just, you're not going to, you know, these instant face, I mean, uh, internet guys it's just no way you're gonna know every situation you go in i'm hearing you saying you're almost like a consultant when you get there because you is that where you're at yeah i'd say so i mean i did if you go in and you are genuinely interested in helping that seller out of their problem i'm gonna come in i'm gonna give you peace of mind you're gonna give me equity in exchange that's what i'm focused on that's the trade-off so let's get you some peace of mind i know my equity is gonna come anyway and if you if that's really what's in your head and that's really your intent, all the right words come out of your mouth. Wow. You know, if, if you were having one conversation scenario with a stranger and then another scenario helping your mom sell her house for her to get the most that she can, like you don't have to have a script for your mom, mm -hmm. right? Just because you care for your mom, you love your mom, you want the best for your mom. And you know, she's gonna break you off a little piece when you when you help her out of her situation at some point. So you all the right stuff and the right actions are going to come out naturally anyway. Nice. Nice. Let's segue, Matt, because I know we're running short on time. Let's segue here, working with yeah. realtors. Now, <clears throat> are you doing wholesaling subject? Are you doing all the extra strategies, Matt? Yeah. So this is how I do it. I can, we kind of started this way when I discovered that all the value was in finding the deal, then that's all I focus on. Is just let's get deals under contract and okay. once you have it under contract now i can decide which exit strategy is going to pay me the highest and best profit for myself at that time because not every property you get is going to be a good fit for every exit strategy and not every um exit strategy is going to be a good fit for what you need at that time you know what I mean? Like I might be in a place where, shoot, I'm a little bit low on funds. I need to pay for pay, repay my marketing budget and I got payroll to pay. So I need to flip this. I need some cash today or so I'm really sound with my cash right now. It all is good. It's time to start continuing building the portfolio and building the wealth. I'm going to try and hold this one. So gotcha. those scenarios, those change on a daily basis for people, right? Yeah, gotcha. gotcha. And then each deal presents a different opportunity for each one of those different scenarios. So I just like to focus on getting the property under contract and then deciding what I'm going to do with it once I've got it locked up. Nice. Okay. 
If you're just joining us, class, Roundup family, I'm hanging out with Matt Terrio. He's out there on the West Coast. We are going over how to find deals, and Matt's getting ready to talk to us about working with realtors and then about cash flow very quickly. Matt, how do we work with realtors? Some people, obviously, wholesaling houses, always a hot topic, working with realtors. Mm -hmm. Right. So a couple things about realtors really quickly. One, I used to be a realtor. I was a realtor for four years. And when, you hold an open house, when you hold an open house as a realtor, uh, during that day, there'll be a half a dozen people that call themselves investors that walk into your open house and say, hey, if you find a deal that makes sense, call me. Like that's the pitch, right? If you got one that pencils out, call me. And realtors just, they don't like investors because that's how they see them because most people call themselves investor and never bought a property in their life and they're just like yeah whatever <laughs> the second thing is they don't know the the investor coming and doesn't know what they're even looking for they say give me a call when something makes sense then the other part of the realtor is like okay if i help you buy means i'm gonna have to write a hundred offers lowball offers and nothing's gonna get accepted so i'm gonna do all this paperwork for free or if i'm gonna sell to you that means i gotta cut into my kid you're gonna come after my commission so that's what they generally, realtors generally think of investors. So wow. now that you're aware of that, if you're going to deal with a realtor and you want a realtor to cooperate, because they can be a great ally if, the, if they like you. That's right. Is All a realtor cares about is, am I going to get my commission? Am I going to get all of it? And how fast am I going to get it? So they want all of their commission. They want it fast. And they want it. They want the certainty of close. They want to know that they're going to get it right. So when you're working with a realtor, that that's one thing that always has to be in your conversation. Just like with a seller, you want your dialogue has to be. I'm on your side with a with a real with a realtor. That means I'm not coming after your commission. I'm going to make sure you get it. I might be a little creative about it, but we're going to make sure that you get paid. So as long as you can let them be feel confident and comfortable about that, half the work is done. The other part is going straight to the listing agent if there's a property that you like and allowing them to represent you. So if they're doing a double, what we call a double agency, that means they have the ability to get paid twice on one sale. And you know, as much as realtors have a fiduciary duty to both sides and equal and fair play, um, you can never forget they are human beings and they're gonna, they're gonna be looking out for themselves as much as they're, the people that they're representing. So those two things, all of a sudden, that kind of clears up everything that gets in the way when you're working with a realtor. Nice. Yep. Nice. So keep that in mind. This, to me, and from my experience, first thing off the top is how they're going to get paid. That's the first thing. I, I just like to get out of the way. Yep. 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 So class, you can wholesale with realtors. I mean, um, I don't want to get too deep in that. I'm sure we could talk about that for an hour. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's. You just always, you always got to play everybody's favorite radio station, W I I F. -M. <laughs> What's in it for me? And as long as you're playing their frequency, you're going to get so much further than if you walk in playing yours. Yeah. I like that, Matt. W I I F. -M. Yeah. I start off every time I borrow money from people, I start off with what we're going to do for them before I even ask for any money. Yeah. Would you like this opportunity or should I take it elsewhere rather than can I borrow some money? Posture. Posture. Yep. Matt, last thing before we get to our QA, last thing was, um, I don't know. I'm just going to kind of take a, a a guess at your past, your wholesale and doing deals. You're getting checks. I know for me, I'm getting big checks at the time, you know, and I'm like, I'm in a real estate business. I've made it. I'm doing, I'm in real estate. I'm wholesaling houses, doing some flips. I'm here. Mm -hmm. That's for a few years. I'm like, Shh. I'm doing the same thing I was doing when I first started. Right. No assets. Mm -hmm. Where are you at mentally, Matt, with uh, our my audience that wants to gung ho about wholesaling and wants to flip houses and regarding their financial freedom? Right. The when we talked when we started off talking about those people that uh, work for forty years and still don't save enough to generate enough for themselves in retirement. Um, wholesaling properties is just a job. It's not real estate investing. It's trading. Right? You are trading your time for dollars. You're trading the deal for, for that pile of cash. You're pursuing piles of cash. And most people just won't make enough in their life to save a pile high enough to where it will generate a residual income at some point that provides for them in the style, the lifestyle that they'd like indefinitely. 
So what? How, what? This is off the top of your head, man. How much cash would I need to have fifty thousand a year? I mean, what what number is that? Um, I don't know. What what interest rate do you think you would get off of a uh, off of that right now today? Let's say a million bucks, right? So that'd be four percent. Four percent. Okay. So you take fifty thousand dollars, divide it by four percent. That's going to tell you what the balance is that you need. My phone's in the other room. 50,000 divided by 0 0.04. That's 2,000 for the year. That's 2,000, right? No, no, no. $50,000 divided 50, by 0 0.04. Oh, divided by 4. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm bugging. One point two five. So you need $1.25 million. You have to save $1.25 million, never touch it, to generate $50,000 a year at a 4%. Wow. So when you look at that, and you know, if, you've, if you have a property in front of you, I'm glad you just put that down because it's going to make this explanation so much easier. All right. So if you have a house, I can flip this house and make $30,000, or I can hold on to it and make $300 a month. That's the choice, right? So most people will take that $30,000 because it's a nice big chunk of cash. It feels good. Um, it can buy a lot for a minute, right? And it can provide a really good lifestyle. And that's the big appeal, appeal to uh, wholesaling is like you can make these giant chunks of cash. This $300 a month, eh, what's that going to do for me? That's hardly going to have any impact on my life whatsoever, right? But go ahead and take that $1.25 million and divide that by... $30,000. How many flips do you have to do to get there? That can't be right. Divided by 30,000? Mm -hmm. 42. So you have to flip 42 properties, right? Yeah. And that's never spending a dime of it. So let's say we're going to put 15000 in the bank and we're going to live off of 15000 We're still over here at the 30K. Oh, I hear it. That's yeah. right. Well, still, that's before taxes, man. You didn't even go that's over that. Taxes. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not even going to put taxes in there because that will really depress everybody. But <laughs> let's say you're going to save fifteen k and live on fifteen k. All right. So that's All times right. two. So that's not 42 houses. Now it's 84 houses, right? Yeah. So now it's 84 houses. That's a lot, man. It is. So now let's go over to the 50K. So what's that $300 a month times 12? That's 3,600, right? 300 times 12 is 3,600. Okay, so take 50K divided by 3,600. All right. 50K divided by 3,600. That's for the year. Yeah. All right. I love the equations, Matt. Real estate, we live by the equations. Right? Math is everything. That's 1.4. Oh, no, no. That's not right. 50,000 divided by 3,600. Oh, I'm sorry. 14. 14 houses. So that's 14 houses versus 84 houses to create your 50K a year. Oh, I see where you're at. I see what you're doing. So I only have to do 14 deals to hit 50K a year. Oh, OMG. I got to do 84 flips oh, to hit 50K a year. I never even looked at it like that, man. So now you do one every other month. Now you can see how you can create that 50K in two or three years. That's just one a month, one every other month. Man, you were talking about one a month. I'm just like, I want my audience to do one every two years. I'm just like, just do one every two years. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. And two still, years, if you I'm did that, you're still accomplishing in 30 years what the population can't do in 40 or 50 years. Wow. If you wow. did it really slow. Yeah. I think yeah. it's more believable. And uh, when you think about every two years, you can shrink it to one. You can shrink mm -hmm. it to six months. You know, you kind of yeah. work backwards. Yep. So all of a sudden, that three hundred dollars a month actually has a much greater value than that pile of thirty thousand dollars cash. 
I'm like, even when I get a check, I don't know where you're at, but when I get a large check, I'm like, it's almost like a burden, an obligation, a duty. Mm-hmm. Man, it's like, I can't spend it, dude. I can't go out here, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that how you, are, are you the same way or how do you look at it when you get a big thing in? Yeah, so I don't really like idle cash sitting around. You know, I've got, I've got enough saved up for a rainy day that, that I'm cool for a year, but anything above that, I got to put it to work. Yeah, what do you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It's a burden. Okay, yes, so this is your, I like the way you broke this down, Matt, because I don't think, for me, when I looked, I looked at this back when I was 21, I think, mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what, I'm just not that good. I know <laughs> I'm not that good to make this type of money at forward. You know, I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. But I could get this a few houses every couple of years. Yes. Done. All right, let's get to some QA, brother Matt. Round up family, please put your questions in there. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the thumbs up. If you like the content, Matt is bringing you some unbelievable stuff, Matt. Thank you for your time, brother. Yep. How many minutes we got with you? It's already, we're already at 50 minutes. I'm good. This thing takes, I always have a problem scrolling through here. Roundup family, if you want us to get to your question now, please put in a super chat. I'll get to it immediately, but we'll get to your question if, uh, as they come in. Carmen wants to know, Matt, do you find, please put your state in here so I need to know where my peoples is at, where my peoples at. Matt, do you find it difficult talking to sellers in Cali who are looking for top dollar for their properties? What is your approach with that? Well, every, Every seller wants top dollar. I've never met a seller that says, you know what? I'm going to give you this. <laughs> right. Okay. So once, once you start recognizing that 95% of all pe- all sales transactions, all houses that get sold are going to be sold by people that want to sell. We're not looking for the people that want to sell. Mm-hmm. We're looking for the people that need to sell. No one that's stable in their right mind is not going to sell you their house at a discount. So if there's no motivation there, there will be no deal. The foundation of every deal lies within the seller's motivation to sell. And uh, if nine out of 10 aren't going to be motivated, then if you meet one of those, hey, great. Only eight more to talk to before I get to the motivated one. I think that's a mental challenge that all investors, successful and effective investors have to get over, Matt. Like, even I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to buy your house or not. I could really care less. You know, I'm here to see what I can do if I, I get to know you. I look at the house. Mm-hmm. I don't know, you know. Hey, Carmen, right there, what Chris just said is a great way to talk to people. I don't even know if I can buy your house. I can't buy them all. So let's see if I can buy yours. <laughs> right? <laughs> Daniel, I got your email. Yes, yes, I got your email. I've been in touch with you about that. Uh, uh, somebody said I'm late. Yes, I was four minutes late. I'm sorry. Oh, that was the best part. North Dakota. <laughs> Matt, you're a celebrity. Everybody can't believe you on my channel. I came. I got Matt too. I'm like, I got Matt. Matt. Rosanna, hey. Oh, um, Daniel wants to know, Matt, if people want to get in touch with you for coaching or uh, consultations, where did where do they go? Uh, the sim- the easiest place, most direct, would be r e i ace dot com. R e i ace dot com. Yep. I'll put that in the video description, family, when it's over, just in case. Cool. Daniel is asking, Matt, do you use Deal Machine? I do. I'm actually buddies with those guys. I'm an affiliate for them. Are they out there? Say again? Are they located out there? Um, I don't know where he is, but I'm an affiliate for him. That's how much I believe in it. But I don't take an affiliate fee. I pass on all this the savings to my people yeah so we get um if you go to deal machine you get fifth uh, 14 days for free if you go to my link you'll get 30 days for free plus 30 dollars of credit for mail nice that's uh driving for dollars with epic.com driving that'll, for dollars with epic nice that'll get wow, you double the benefits. huh that'll get you double the benefits yeah nice we got a 20 year old here, Matt. Ways dope. He wants to know is wholesaling a good place to start for him? He's passionate. Yeah. No, I mean, wholesaling is great to, to generate some cash. You should probably have both engines running in your business. So you want an active income engine, which would be wholesaling. You want a passive income engine, which would be buy and hold. And 
use the active engine, the wholesaling engine, to feed the passive one. But be careful, like the demonstration the math you see behind Chris right now, that can be very seductive. And you can get very much addicted to those giant chunks of, uh, of cash and all of a sudden you find yourself 10 years down the road and you're no further along then than you are right now. I'm telling you, man, I think the worst story, I, I saw myself, I saw my future self in front of, in my head, like wholesaling, wholesaling, flipping, flipping. I'm like, dude, if I did this, if I, if this is all I do, I'll be doing this shit forever. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. As soon as one deal is done, you got to wake up and find the next one. Man, you know, this shit looks so good on um, this is HGTV, man. You know, this just makes my stomach. <laughs> My wife was on one of those shows, and there's so much stuff that goes on behind the scenes that people don't see. I mean, the, the, the TV companies, production companies, are paying for half of the stuff just to make sure that you come out profitable for the show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm spending 25000 to sell a house, Matt. I can only imagine what you're spending to sell a house out there. Mm. It's got to be crazy. Unapologetic. I did get your email. I will respond to emails today. I've been super backed up on emails today. Shaq. Oh, he, he likes Deal Machine. Matt, this is the best information I've heard in a long time. Wow, nice. Awesome. Thank you. Lucian Wales wants to know how, if you are, are you marketing for subject to deals, Matt? <clears throat> Yeah, so I just, I market for deals. I never, it's really difficult to, and I don't even know if it's possible to get laser focused and I'm just looking for lease options or I'm just looking for subject to. What you're looking for is motivation. And when that motivation crosses your desk, you wanna make sure that you got a full toolbox to handle whatever comes your way. I think that's the best way to do it. If, if you're focusing for just one type of deal, you're gonna leave a lot of money on the table because you can make, some money off of every opportunity that comes across your table. But if you're only trying to fit that that subject to property into that subject to hole, you know, you're going to miss the wholesale holes. You're going to miss the seller finance holes. You're going to miss the lease option holes. You're going to miss the fix and flip holes. You're going to miss all of this other opportunity if you're just looking for that. So I would focus more for the motivation and then just make sure that your your toolbox is full and so you can seize whichever opportunity comes your way. Sounds like you, you, you're talking about working on ourselves instead of work, focusing on the market. Mm hmm. But marketing is just it's so expensive, like you can't afford to throw stuff away just because it doesn't fit in your subject to box. You know what I mean? Right. Nice. Subject yeah. to you can interchange that with anything because a lot of people think that way. Jordan, thank you. Thank you for supporting Jordan. Jordan is this. Daniel, thank you so much for your love offering, my friend. Uh, oh, yeah. Ultimate bargains is saying real, rental income is tax differently than flip income. Yes. True that. Heidi wants to know the equation of selling houses forever is not residual income. The, the, the equation for selling their houses is not residual income. I don't understand that. I'm sorry, Heidi, I, I put it, could you give it to me a little more plain? Daniel, thank you so much. Jesse, hey, Jesse, as an out-of-state investor, what are some of the questions to ask real estate agent? He's from Arizona, moving here, okay, to Virginia, Chesapeake area within the next few months. It's a good question. I don't know. Man. What does he want to know? I guess he, uh, he's moving here. I guess he needs to pre-screen an agent before he gets here. Mm -hmm. The most, I think the most impactful question that you can ask an agent, straight, especially if it's, like, it's a cold relationship, is... What, listing, what listings do you have or know of that would be open to sell or carry back? Typically, listings that are open to sell or carry back. Well, one, obviously, you don't need the bank if you want to take it down. But second, it typically will mean that there's something about that property that disqualifies them from conventional financing. So that means there's a problem there. And those are, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for those people that need to sell. So that's that's one question I like to ask every agent I talk to. Do you have any listings that'll carry back or offer entertain right. seller financing? Aaron from New York said it doesn't have a lot of cash. Are there strategies to invest using other people's money? And do you suggest starting out that way? Matt? 
Yeah, I mean, of course there are. There's there's an abundance. So, kind of what the, the little underlying theme of this whole whole episode or this show that we've talked about today is find the deal first. Don't worry yeah. about the money. Don't worry about the money. The, there ain't no value in the money. The value is in the deal. And if you find the, find the deal and get it at the right price or able to create the right opportunity, people will fight for you to, to, get money, to give you the money. I'm presuming, Matt, how much money could you possibly calculate if you had 25 cents for every time you heard, if I, I only need the money, if yep. I only had the money. Yep. You know what's really funny about that? Because if you go to conventional real estate, like people going out, they hire a real estate agent, they go out to buy their primary residence. And they go and you go get pre-qualified, right? That's the kind of the, the process. You go get pre-qualified with their lender, but you don't have the money. That that lender is not giving you the money until you get that property under contract. And now you'll go through the approval process. Nice. So even in if you're playing 100% inside the box of real estate, you still need to find the deal first. You still wow. have to get the property under contract because they're not going to give you the money unless the thing appraises. Nice. That's a good way to think about it, man. Wow, on both sides of the conventional and non-conventional. Yep. You got to find the deal first. Focus on that. Andre said he's seriously considering your epic system. Is there in any immediate upsell? <laughs> <laughs> Andre, you got to talk to him on that one. I mean, the man's out here working. <laughs> immediate upsell. <laughs> Come on. We're not selling anything here today. No. This is some good stuff. Uh, Matt, how many houses do you need to look at a day to find a great deal? I don't know if it's a day thing. I think it's just a, go ahead, Matt. How many I houses would, do you look at? I would, I would do this equation better. Just wake up each day and make sure that you're going to write at least one offer today. Nice. Like wake up, who's going to get my offer today? You do one offer a day, that's 365 offers a year. I mean, you're probably good for a good 10 deals a year if you're really bad at it. At least three or four. I mean, I think the problem is people think that writing 10 offers, Matt, equals working hard. James, I one hey. a day. If you did that, you'd be fine. I'm living abroad in Ecuador. Wow, for the next two years. I was planning to house hack. Okay, yeah. All right, James, put it in a question. I'll get it over to Matt. Robel, Matt, do you own any multifamily units? And if so, what kind? Mm, I don't anymore. I had a bunch. Okay. And uh, yeah, I don't anymore. I just I just did them wrong. So I'm much Why smarter that, now. And I'll, I'll get back into them, but uh, I don't right now. Why did you get out of them real quick? Uh, I bit off a little bit more than I could chew. I got a little too big for my britches. Um, I got up to probably 70-ish single families. And I just wanted to go faster. And someone came to me with an opportunity of here's a 14 unit for almost free. And I said, well, shoot, that's, I could multiply. I could go really quick if I did that. <laughs> and then I got a 40 unit, a 50 unit. And I just bought too much too fast that I couldn't manage it. So next time around, I will uh, I'll go much slower. But I'm, I'm in the market for it right now. My mentor said there's two gears in real estate. Fast forward really fast or fast forward really back. <laughs> Probably accurate. Uh, is wholesaling a good idea for, I'm sorry, James, I don't understand it. That's it, Matt. That's going to be it. All right. No questions here. Oh, Julius has one question about virtual wholesaling. I saw you talk about that lately too, Matt. How do you feel about virtual wholesaling? Hmm. Ah, timely question. Yeah. Really? <laughs> for teeing that one up for me. <laughs> uh, no, I've got the two students that uh, came to me just recently. They've been very successful. They're both seven figure earners they've, and they've built their business with virtually wholesaling. And they came to me and said, Matt, we've got this idea. We want to put this thing together. Maybe we'll make a few bucks and that's cool. But if not, that's fine too. But we just want to make sure that people really know how to make this happen virtually. Will you help me put it together? And I was like, okay, sure. So that was about six months ago, but it's just opening up tomorrow night at wholesalingvirtually.com. Nice. Wholesalingvirtually.com. And it's not for beginners. You're more than welcome to come and watch. But uh, there, there's a lot of assumptions in this course that uh, you already know. How, you've done a deal or two. You know how the real estate part works. Now it's about building a virtual business. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Roundup family, before I let Matt go, before I let Matt go, I just want to tell you this weekend gonna we're gonna have our Memorial Day sale on all of my real estate trainings. Everything will be under a hundred bucks. Everything. So make sure you stay tuned to my channel. I'll be live every day this week. Matt, final thoughts for our new investors looking to find the first deal, my friend. Yeah, focus on the deal. No, and remove your focus from the money. And you know, look for problems and the profit will follow. Uh, you you give pe enough people peace of mind around that you're going to get the equity in exchange and equity solving a problem okay matt i'll let you go man i appreciate your time my friend thanks bud take care chris talk to you soon round up family listen this weekend i'm going to have my memorial day sale on all of my real estate training my negotiation <clears throat> subject to land trust lease option all that crap will be under 100 bucks this weekend only for Memorial Day. Thank you for hanging out with me and brother Matt. Wow, did he not give us some true value? I'm so excited that people, I've been trying to get Matt on here for two months. Two months I've been trying to get this dude on here. So I hope you are receiving the value and the spirit that I like to give. I love to give. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, Roundup Family, and I will be live again on Wednesday with Eddie and probably doing some, I haven't, if you can help me think of my, evening when i like to come on live at nighttime about around nine o'clock if you have some ideas for my evening live sessions please put them in the chat or put them in the video description i was maybe going to call it evening entrepreneur class or something like that but if you have any type of ideas for my evening nine o'clock sessions please put it in there so i can kind of get something catchy around the family i love it my stuff oh it'll be a link in one of my YouTube videos and just go to my website where the website is going to be completely changed around this week. It'll be completely different on the real estate roundup.com. That's the real estate roundup.com. Jesse, I love you, Roundup. I see you soon. Peace.